Hey, what's up folks? It's Jesse with Keeping Real Finance, a channel that always says you're back and tells it like it is. Well, today's video is another installment of your Jasmine weekly update. So in today's video, we got a lot to cover, a lot to unpack. Uh, we got a few tweets from Haro we're going to be covering. We got circulating supply to cover. We're going to be talking about the weekly Jasmine calls. Um, you know, I'm going to touch a little bit on the uh, wallet blockchain that I recently mentioned just the other day in a video. If you haven't seen that, by all means, check out that video. Hopefully that answers any questions that you may have. Uh, ultimately, we're going to wrap this video up with some final thoughts talking about legacy in particular, and that's going to be a bit of a theme for today's video. Okay, so stick around for that. Should be pretty interesting on how I see legacy fitting into the Jasmi project. So. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit the like button. If this is your first time to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And if you click the bell, you'll be made aware whenever I post time-sensitive content. And now, let's get it going. What's up, everybody? It is time for your weekly Jasmine update. And so in today's video, obviously, if you, if you follow my channel, I covered uh, quite a lot in yesterday's video regarding uh, the wallet and the blockchain. So I highly recommend checking out that video if you have not yet, if you are following Jasmine or into this project. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is kind of scroll on through the feed. I've got all kinds of different things to talk about, some insights on the side. And then, uh, you know, we'll probably wrap this up with some uh, final thoughts talking about legacy in particular. So I think that's a really important theme for this week's video. So with that, I kind of wanted to kick off this video with something kind of fun here. I had shared a photo. This was uh, from my house, and this is the koi pond that I built. And, uh, you know, I like to give you all kind of insights into my life and what I'm doing here. Uh, this is kind of like a new hobby of mine. Tons of fun. Obviously, it's Japan inspired. Um, you know, there's talk of all of us getting tattoos with the Jasmine J um, when it goes big time. And so who knows? Maybe I'll get a tattoo with some koi fish on it, whatever. But uh, just wanted to share with you all that uh, here's my koi pond in the front yard. I've got uh, quite a few koi in there now, along with some goldfish and some other stuff. Uh, but uh, pretty neat. So just wanted to share that. Moving on up here, we've got the recap of our weekly call. So every Sunday we do a call. It's typically at 5.30 um, Eastern time. Uh, this past Sunday, we had uh, Dell Crypto joined in for a little bit. Uh, you know, all of us speakers are kind of the regulars. We got uh, Brian, Dip, uh, Blake, myself, Jasmine US is uh, the host. And so we did that this past Sunday. There's a recording of that call for anybody uh, wanting to listen to that. I've got that posted on my feed here. Moving on up, we had the uh, second part of a AMA with uh, Katsumasa Sato. Uh, and his title, this is really interesting. We, we've been able to catch that depending on if you're looking at the main website in Japanese versus English, the titles kind of change between he and Ando. They sort of flip-flop. <laughs> so they almost come across as both like co-CEOs in a way, but the representative director kind of goes back and forth. So anyway, I had a quote here from him, from this article in particular, and it says, I think that many Japanese companies think that they must also work hard to collect data, but I tend to want to go where other people don't go, partly because I came from Sony. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, right? A little Sony name drop. And then I also mentioned down here, now, basically, this was also a great interview because Sato discussed the prospect of the personal data locker in the medical field. Uh, he talked about it in use in travel with this uh, TRIPA or TRIPA, however you say that, regarding uh, the uh, travel agency. And we talked about the entry exit system for the Nippon Ham Fighters in Hokkaido, the new stadium, which, by the way, I've also been able to find in uh, other research that was a government approved project towards uh, Japan's goal of having smart cities. So, you know, the government of Japan is behind that one. And JASME is a partner in that project, along with uh, Panasonic in particular. So moving on up here, we got a post here from uh, Captain JASME. We got 22 days until the week where 50 weeks IR is set to finish. So he mentions Jasmine as a world-class team with professional relationships to lead Web3, not only in Japan, but worldwide. So, 
Captain Jasmine, if you're not following him already, he's got a lot of really solid posts like this that are just sort of, you know, you read them and you go, yep, he's got a point. <laughs> he's got a great point. And I'll tell you, with Jasmine in particular, it really runs when they're not uh, diluting by providing more coins to the market. And I, I had a post about that also, uh, which I don't know if it'll show up in the feed or not, uh, where I commented on uh, specifically how many coins we have to go. And I think at the time it was roughly somewhere around 9.8 billion, and this was about a day or two ago. So we are getting closer and closer by the day to getting these coins out there. And when they are, Jasmine is really gonna move, all right? So moving on up here, this was a post from Hyde Parra. If you're not following him, give him a follow. He is actually in Japan and he's part of our uh, research group. So great guy to have on the team. Uh, he had mentioned here that the description in Ando had changed and that's kind of why I was alluding to earlier. Um, oh, I had a great post here regarding Masanobu Yoshida. So he is the uh, one of the former founders of Jasmine that uh, stepped away to do Dream Forest. And one of the things that uh, Brian Russell in particular has really highlighted is how these karet, karetsus, uh, basically it's like a, a partnership with multiple corporations for a broad goal. Um, when they're part, when you're working within a company within one of these, a lot of the leadership will eventually leave and go to other companies within the same karetsu. So they continue to push the overall message, but in different capacities. Um, so that's really interesting. And so what I was highlighting in this particular post, uh, it was taken from his LinkedIn page, which he has been updating. And it talks about how he is now a uh, professor at his alma mater. So that's really, really cool. Uh, so he's been doing that on the side. Uh, so by all means, check that out. He is, uh, you know, one of the, um, it, as I see it, he's a very important player behind the uh, Jasmine idea and uh, data democratization. He was also extremely important at Sony as well. Um, so that was that post. I'm going to highlight Dip Metaverse at the end uh, because the numbers have been, you know, changing pretty regularly. We had this post here also from the captain. So Sagan Tosu fan token. Uh, plan to be released using personal data locker technology on the 1st of September. So the same week as 50 Weeks IR is planned to end. It's all coming together, and maybe we're closer than you think. So I agree with him. So that's really cool. So I think uh, September 1st obviously is going to be a really important uh, date for us because that's when that pre-registration wraps up. All right. Moving on up here. So let's see. Jasmine Management. Um, We've got Jasmine Biomedica Solution begin joint development. I already talked about that last week, so we're not really going to get into that too much more this week, but there's a lot of implications there. And uh, potentially I kind of maybe downplayed that a little in my last video because Biomedica is a uh, medical um, manufacturer, but uh, CoinFrontation did a great video on it. And uh, yeah, by all means, check that out um, in terms of his review for Biomedica. He's also part of our research group, right? So moving on up here, here's one from Jasmine US. So KPI goal of 1787 by 2026 with 107 million users. So of that 107 million, they want 7 million users in Japan, the rest around the world, okay? And so Jasmine US said, Jasmine's focusing on Japan and Asia first, which is 100% true. Target nations though, India, Thailand, Vietnam, Philippines, China, Indonesia, Bangladesh, um, Roughly 3% of these nations equals 107 million lockers, okay? So when you look at the numbers and the KPI and you break it down like that, you see how maybe this could be actually achievable. So, uh, you know, we've talked about that a lot personally in our group, our research group, that why even throw numbers out there if you didn't think you couldn't meet or break them, right? And that's, that's how these guys work, you know, that come from corporate backgrounds. So I agree with that uh, 100% that why, why put those numbers out there if you don't think that you can meet them or break them? So they really think that they can do this. So we'll see what happens, right? Moving on up, here was a post here referencing the ballpark yet again, the Hokkaido ballpark. I already touched on that with Smart City. Uh, th this is a really big deal for the government of Japan and also... This is something that Kunitake Ando in particular is behind. And we're gonna talk about that at the end, like I said, with 
uh, a little bit of a discussion on legacy in the final thoughts, all right? Now this here, so Hara actually had a retweet of a print publication. So it says, Nikkei Sanyo uh, Shimbun uh, published an article about Jasmine's efforts with Nippon Travel Agency. The article describes the ongoing efforts at Trip, Trip A, Tripa, and includes future prospects for the uh, initiative concept using PDL and Jasmine's AI engine, okay? I've talked about that a lot on this channel in terms of if a company had your travel preferences or travel history, and that, that was all secured within the personal data locker, if they applied Edge AI to that, could they figure out trips that you may not even know you want to go on yet, plan it all out, suggest it to you, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's kind of where he's going with this. And for some reason, you know, it's kind of embarrassing sometimes that there's so many trolls on Twitter, but, uh, you know, Hara, every time he posts, gets like a ton of hate from trolls. And it, it's just so unwarranted, you know? Everybody says, oh, we need more info from Haro. We need more info. And then when he posts, they criticize the info and say, oh, I can't believe this. A print publication? Well, yeah, you know, a lot of the world still works with print. Not everything is digital, and that's okay. Some things are still print. There are numerous print publications all over the world today, right now, okay? So that's still something that exists. So, you know, no need to bash him. Uh, over that. Okay. Um, Dip Metaverse. Now I will touch on this. So Dip Metaverse shared in this video here that uh, he basically is now going to go by a range within his um, his circulating supply numbers. So I, I kind of view this as sort of funny. It's, it's kind of like the, um, the cable guy, right? So the cable guy tells you he's going, coming out to your house between 12 o'clock and 4 p.m. Okay, great. So we have a four hour window and he usually shows up at about 358, right? So I think, uh, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with providing range because these coins are always moving and sometimes there's a wallet here or there that you're not 100% sure what it's doing. So I told him I agreed with that 100%, provide a range from now on. The range though is basically, um, and, and I'm not gonna touch on these exact numbers because they have changed, but this is this is where they were between at the time of this post on August 9th was, uh, you know, between let's say 37 billion, okay? Moving on up, uh, Brian Kunitake Ando has one of the craziest resumes. Also handy that he is the executive chairman for a drive recorder business through TB Group. Uh, BWE TB Group were in the same booth during the 2016 SeaTac convention as well. And I would agree with that 100%. Um, for anybody out there, if you've never heard of Kunitake Ando, He's former CEO of Sony from 2000 to 2005. He knows Bill Gates. He knows Steve Jobs. He knows absolutely everybody. Uh, he's well versed in the U.S., et cetera, et cetera. He's a he's a pretty big name in the space. And when you talk about him in Japan, um, he is very well known. He's in numerous government boards, projects, uh, you name it. He's all over the place. So, moving on up from there. So Hara had a couple of tweets about this, and I want to say I retweeted the other one a little bit later because I thought it was in this, but I, when I later looked at it, I didn't see it. So he mentions here that Jasmine USDT trading pair is now in full trading mode on Coinbase, okay? Now, the other tweet that coincides with this talks about, uh, in particular, this auction idea that Coinbase is doing where essentially people can bid in an auction and the way I see it is you could potentially uh, pick up coins at a discount in something like a down market. And so the question then is, well, why is Coinbase doing this? And so I kind of wanted to briefly touch on this, that Coinbase in particular, um, you know, their stock's been taking a beating. Uh, they had to lay off some staff. They had to update their terms of service, all these things. Coinbase is looking for reasons um, not, not necessarily reasons. They're, they're looking for use cases. That's a better way to put it. They're looking for use cases um, to bring in money, income, revenue, regardless of where the market is at, up or down. And so right now, the problem is that the crypto, crypto market is so volatile that when it absolutely tanks, all the trading fees tank with it. And then the institution doesn't have enough money 
to pay for their staff, their expenses, et cetera. And so the institution is then forced to scale down. So there's a wide range of scaling down and scaling up that happens with cryptocurrency institutions, specifically these centralized exchanges like Coinbase. And so what Coinbase is doing is they're trying to figure out ways to just bring in revenue regardless of whatever the market's doing, which is another reason why they recently launched something called Coinbase One, um, which is, I think, $29 a month. And uh, there's like a free trial for a month. And after that, if you want to do it, great. And if not, you can cancel it, whatever. Um, and I do have a referral link for them if you want to follow that. But regardless of any of that, that's not really my point. My point here is that with Coinbase, um, they're, they're just looking for other ways to make money in a down market so that they don't have the volatility at the company level. And then that would also probably stabilize their stock price. So that's all this is. But it, where it matters with Jasmine in particular is that it's referring to this Jasmine USDT trading pair. Okay. Moving on up. So this is kind of interesting. So Blake has talked about this a couple of times. So um, there's this date, this April 5th, 2016, uh, you know, is, is the date that Jasmine's founded. Uh, it's, it's the same date that I, I want to say Bitcoin started. It's another relevant date for Japan. Um, there's a lot of things around this date in particular. And, uh, you know, the kind of in the rumor mill, it's like, you know, we still don't really know who started Bitcoin, right? Was Satoshi one person? Was it multiple people? Is that person dead? Is that person alive? Are those people dead? Are they alive? No one really knows that story, but What's really interesting is there's a lot of things where you could almost say, maybe this is like something that kind of cropped out of something like a Sony. It, it is absolutely possible. So who knows, but in particular, the dates, in, the dates matter. So the dates all seem to line up with this, this April 5th date. So I don't know, maybe Blake is onto something there. Everything that I had always seen in the past said that they thought Satoshi was British. Uh, because the posts aligned with British time, cryptocurrency aligns with British time when it restarts every day. Uh, so there was somewhere in the white paper that referenced a British newspaper. Um, but again, that doesn't necessarily mean they're British. That could mean they were living in Britain, but they're not British. <laughs> so who knows? More to come on that, but a really interesting post from Blake. Uh, I had a post here from Jasmine Profit. So Jasmine's not on the list of those saying it was under investigation by the SEC. Do your research. <laughs> so spot on, they were not on this list. So they are not under investigation for being a security. And I've had this question asked, and it was also asked, I called into uh, Coinfrontation, uh, did his first uh, weekly call just the other day. I called in on that, which may be a good option uh, for those of you that are in Europe or Asia and you're unable to make our other call. Uh, he held a call for the first time. I called in and kind of answered a question around uh, Jasmine being classified as a security, yes or no, or what that looks like. And there's numerous different angles to that. I, I personally don't really think it's a security. I think the only aspect of a security that it has is that it is listed on an exchange and investors can buy it, hoping that it goes up in value. But outside of that, all the other things with it, it's not a security. So it's got... It's got some characteristics of a commodity. Um, it's also just so much more because it's a utility token for the IoT network. So it's there's a lot more to this, basically. So if you were trying to say it's a security, that would kind of really be a uh, ignorant view, uh, in my opinion, for Jasmine. So moving on. Um, Let's see here, Zippy Crypto, Jasmine Platform Interface, White Label API Partnership through Centrality. So I talked about this yesterday. Uh, and what he's uh, showing here, Zippy is showing is, here's CentraPay demonstrating its digital payments with a vending machine. So good video here, you can check that out. Um, that specifically is talking about the Centrality Partnership with Jasmine, all right? Moving on up, uh, Jasmine US. So despite an unfavorable tax scenario in Japan, Jasmine and SMBC are looking to partner with institutional clients regarding NFT technology. So Japan keeps moving towards Web3, towards IoT, um, towards the smart cities. 
Uh, they see this as the way of the future. The legislation just has to catch up. And that could be happening in 2023 in particular, because right now the taxes on cryptocurrency are just too high in Japan in particular, um, as well as you can also be taxed on unrealized gains. So uh, more to come on that front, but it does appear that that's in the works to get those laws updated, All right? Uh, moving on up. So I mentioned I was going to do the video here. Here is the actual video on the Jasmine blockchain and wallet explained. For anybody who doesn't understand the Jasmine blockchain and wallet, I think I pretty well covered it in here. Um, if I didn't, by all means, you can leave me a comment on here on Twitter. You can leave a comment on YouTube, uh, whatever questions you may have. Hopefully I covered it though, exactly how this partnership with Centrality works. All right. Moving on up, I may as well give you a shout out here. Um, so at Britman, uh, Monkey Sausage. So he's been following me for a while. We talk every now and then. Uh, amazing photography. So he's been posting some really cool photography. I went ahead and retweeted that. Give him a follow if you're not already and you're on Twitter if you want to just see some really neat stuff. Um, I was telling him he absolutely has to post some more. Uh, moving on up. So this horror tweet, I already covered that with Coinbase. Uh, we do have our weekly space that's gone out here. Um, this one, again, yeah, roughly 5.30 p.m. my time, which is Eastern U.S., so wherever you're at, uh, that's the time for the call. That's uh, Jasmine U.S. is our host. And then lastly up here, I've got this uh, tweet from uh, Dip Metaverse. So 100 million was added to circulating supply while I was sleeping. <laughs> How dare you sleep, Dip Metaverse? So based on this tweet and the one before, about 300 million was added in like 12 hours. So look at this. So we're basically at a range now between 37 and 38.1. So we are getting closer and closer to getting all the coins out there, all right? Now, lastly here, I did want to cruise over to TradingView and just kind of show what's going on in the Jasmi chart. And the Jasmine chart has been trying to break out of this sort of downward trend. Uh, will it ultimately do it or not? To be determined, I think, you know, the thing that weighs on it, obviously, is the continued dilution uh, with the additional exchange listings, etc. So, again, I'm not expecting big moves out of this really until that wraps up, but they have been significantly ahead of schedule. So could that be wrapping up this year? It may be. It may ultimately wrap up this year, which would mean that next year, uh, we could have a serious Jasmine run. And I've been talking about a run potentially in the spring for uh, quite a while now, but uh, that that could be on the horizon. So keep an eye on that. You know, for those of us who are in this project, we're, we're kind of vested into this one for years. Um, all of us are looking at their KPI numbers that they're trying to hit by 2026. Uh, if they could even, you know, get a fraction of that, this is one hell of an investment, okay? So if they could hit those numbers, uh, just crazy, absolutely crazy. So could it happen? Who knows? Maybe it will. Uh, you know, I talked about it numerous times that back when uh, Cardano made its run, I didn't think there was any way it was going to happen. I thought there was just no way. There's too many coins. Can't happen. And it went on uh, qu quite, quite the run this last uh, bull run. So anyway, I think Jasmine has more than enough potential. But with that, that wraps up the weekly part of this video. Now I want to wrap everything up with some final thoughts and talk about legacy. All right, so for the final thoughts in today's video, I really wanted to talk about legacy. And here's what I'm getting at, is that Kunitake Ando, who is an extremely impressive person, has a vast, really long resume, extremely impressive resume, involved with the government, numerous boards, numerous companies, former CEO of Sony, knows everybody, all of that good stuff. Uh, why get involved with Jasmine at the end of his career? He's basically somewhere right around, I think, uh, 80 years old, okay? So you gotta ask yourself, why does somebody like this get involved with Jasmine at that point in their life? Is he doing it for the money, right? That's kind of the, you know, the thing that uh, every scammer throws out there, right? Or, or, or anybody saying that uh, Jasmine's a scam, right? They're doing it for the money. They're just fleecing people, whatever. Okay, fine. So is Kunitake Ando doing it for the money? I don't think so, okay? So you gotta ask yourself, why would somebody with a prestigious resume, with all these credentials, with government connections, with corporate 
connections across the world, throw away everything at the very end. They wouldn't, okay? So why is he doing it? He's doing it for legacy. So Kunitake Ando has said that he doesn't think Japan has any tier one IT, um, tier one tech companies, put it that way. So on the level of GAFA, so Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, you could probably say Microsoft. He doesn't think they have any companies that are on that level. Now, I would argue that Sony is definitely a legit company, but are they on the level of them? Maybe, maybe not monetarily wise. Um, but, you know, you got to look at the PlayStation, um, all the things that Sony is involved in, you know, uh, manufacturing, etc. It's also involved in enter entertainment, movies, you name it. Um, but he doesn't see Japan having a company like this, okay? The other thing here is that Japan is a very challenging cryptocurrency environment, and it has been for years now, okay? It would have been significantly easier for them to start Jasme in Singapore, for example. There are numerous cryptocurrency projects that are based in Singapore, but they did not do that. They did it in Japan from day one, from 2016. They have stayed in Japan the whole time. They are not leaving Japan. The J in Jasmine stands for Japan, <laughs> okay? So this is a Japan first cryptocurrency project brought by former corporate executives that are closely tied to the government of Japan. Um, you know, I talked about those KPI numbers earlier, and we've talked about that privately in our various research groups of why even put these numbers out there if they didn't think they could either meet them or exceed them, okay? I mean, they set the bar pretty high, that really high. <laughs> but why would they make that public if they didn't think they could do it? So that tells me that they think they can do it and they think it is possible and they think they could exceed it, okay? So again, going back to Ando and going back to Jasmine as a whole, why, why even be involved in this at all? It's not about the money. It's about the legacy, okay? He is also um, on the Nagano, I want to say it was, the, I think, the Nagano University. Um, Masanobu Yoshida, one of the other JASME founders, he is now at his university. There are numerous university ties with JASME. Uh, there was an article I recently found from 2019, 2020 on the JASME Ideathon uh, that had some university connections to it, okay? So they're tied into the universities, to the governments, and why would they create this project um, if it wasn't about legacy? And that's what I think it is for Ando at this point. I think it's about him leaving something for the next generation of Japan that can propel the country of Japan into a new era. And I think that's exactly what he's trying to do here. So. There is a significant theme with Jasme that is Japan first. If you look at all of the marketing, uh, the marketing in Japan is actually excellent. It's really good, okay? The marketing to cryptocurrency investors around the world is kind of hodgepodge. It's all over the place, right? But Japan specifically, it's really good, okay? Um, Everything they do is targeting Japan. The personal data locker, the current uh, pre-registration sign-up, you have to live in Japan for Sagan Tosu. You have to live in Japan to do this. Uh, later in the year, I do think they will release a wallet, and I think it will be tailored towards Japan first. Okay, That's okay. Japan is the testing ground for the technology. If they can prove it works there, they can prove it works anywhere, and then they can expand. We know that they've looked at Vietnam. We know that they've looked into the US. Uh, we see them going beyond these borders. Prime Minister um, Yoshida, he was, not Yoshida. Um, Prime Minister, I can't think of his name. Anyway, the Prime Minister of Japan, he was recently in the UK. So could they go to the UK too? Absolutely. So when you just think about it in terms of legacy, I think the Japanese view this that they have not reached where they were prominently in the early um, 80s, 90s. They've, they've kind of fallen from grace from that uh, era. And I think they want to return to that to bring Japan back. So that being said, 
That's it for this week's video. Hopefully all those different articles get you caught up on what's been happening, and hopefully you can see the theme here of legacy and of Japan first in particular, and why that's a focus for Jasmine. This is not about some quick get rich scheme. This is much, much more than that, and it goes much, much deeper. And all the research that we've done and found, uh, it, it really does go very, very deep. And so, um, Overall, you, you know, all of us in our research group, we've always said from day one, if there's ever a red flag here or there, we will absolutely expose it and we will follow down any lead we can wherever it will go, okay? It's just an objective look, okay? But for Jasmine and for Kunitaki Ando, you can really see how it is a legacy project because let's be honest, he's 80 years old at this point. So this is all about leaving something for the next generation. All right, so that's it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Don't forget that I'm also on Twitter at KIR Finance where you can find me tweeting and retweeting on a regular basis. Check me out there. I've also got the Patreon page. If you want to support the channel, you can go to the Patreon page. I've got the QR code right over here. You can click on that. It will take you to the website. I've got the financial blog uh, with all kinds of free information there. Feel free to check that out. And lastly, for a friendly reminder, this is Jesse with Keeping It Real Finance. Channel now is your back. Tells it like it is, and I will see you on the next one. Later.